welcome to the third lesson of mathematics for it this lesson is on introduction to sets so this is the color coding that we are going to adhere to during the presentation let's first look at the learning outcomes so by the end of this lesson uh, you should be able to define a set for a given collection of objects and represent sets using builder form and tabular form and define finite sets infinite sets null sets subsets proper sets uh, equality of sets and disjoint sets and eventually to compute the cardinality of a finite set all right so let's first take a introduction uh, to sets so what do we mean by a set it is a collection of well defined objects so these objects of a set are often called elements or members of the set and then uh, you have this not notation uh, on set membership for example 5 is a member of this specified set which has the elements 2 5 7 and 9 similarly we can say 8 is not a member of the set which includes the members 3 9 12 and 15 and let's uh, then look at the formal ways of specifying a set first one is tabular form so we have seen that already uh, that explicitly list all the elements of the, of a set for example set a uh, has the members 1 2 3 and 4 so that is the tabular form in which you list all the elements of the set and next second one is set builder notation in this case uh, it is defined by a property that all elements of the sets must satisfy for example uh, set b you have x where x is a letter in the english alphabet and x is a vowel and now we look at uh, these terms uh, universal set and empty sets so what is meant by a universal set this is all the elements of any group under consideration so for example if it, if we are in the domain of astronomy uh, the universal set could be all the stars in the milky way galaxy and if you are talking about uh, human population studies it could be all the people in the world so that is an example of the universal set and next let's look at what is meant by an empty set or a null set the notation is also given so empty set uh, or null set is a set with no elements so for example uh, a set s where x is a positive integer and x squared is equal to 3 so obviously this kind of a set does not have any elements so it is called a null set or an empty set and now we look at some important sets in uh, numbers so for example you can define the set of natural numbers which is denoted by a uh, uppercase n and then you can also define natural numbers with zero uppercase n zero and of course then you can define a set of integers positive and negative uh, with zero which is denoted by the capital letter z and z plus denotes the set of positive in integers and also z minus similarly uh, denotes the set of negative integers we move on with some more where q uppercase q denotes the set of rational numbers and there you can also have some examples and similarly you can define the set of real numbers imaginary numbers and complex numbers as well so in the coming lectures you will see some examples uh, that include uh, these important type of sets that are related to numbers 
Now we look at what we mean, what we mean by a subset. Okay, so let, let's take an example. Let A be a set. And then if B is a set such that each element of B is also an element of A. So B and A are two sets. So in this case, B is said to be a subset of set A. And it is, it is denoted by the given notation. B is a subset of A. So how do we read this? B is a subset of A. So that uh, notation can be either, uh, can, could be used in either ways. And next point is uh, two sets are equal if they both have the same elements or equivalently if each is contained in the other. So this can be given uh, in a mathematical notation as follows. A is equal to B. So we are dealing with sets here. A is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So this is how we denote subsets. So we need to understand uh, the concept of a subset. To do that, we have an example here. So consider the sets A, B, and C. A is 1, 3, 4, 7, 8, 7, 7, 8, 9. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and C is 1, 3. So it is, uh, you can see all the elements of each of the sets that are provided. So based on those information, you should see that C is a subset of A because one and three are both included in set A. And also C is a subset of B. Why? Because one and three are also included in B. Uh, but B is not a subset of A because all the elements in B are not included in A. Some elements are there, but not all. So for example, two and five do not belong to A. Similarly, A is not a subset of B. So this is how you determine whether a specific set is a subset of another set. Now we come in to look at some special remarks on sets. So first point, for any set A, we have the null set is a subset of A, and A is a subset of the universal set. So this is not difficult to understand because null set does not contain anything, and A will uh, consist of some elements, some defined elements, and all those elements will be uh, included in the universal set as well. And number two is for any set A, we have A is also a subset of A because this is intuitive. Point number three is if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, this implies that A is a subset of C. Okay. And now another special remark, uh, we can look at this diagram, figure 3.1, which is uh, related to the example given about sets of numbers. Okay, So you have natural numbers, which is a subset of integers, which is a subset of rational numbers, and that is a subset of real numbers, and eventually that is also a subset of complex numbers. So it is given in the notation as well. Uppercase N is natural numbers, uppercase Z is integers, uppercase Q is rational numbers, and uppercase R are real numbers, and uppercase C are complex numbers. So now let's look at another concept which is meant by a proper subset. So let's see what is meant by a proper subset. Uh, so if A is a subset of B, but A is not equal to B. 
So in this case, we say that A is a proper subset of B. It's denoted in a different notation. Let's take an example. So let C be the set including the elements one and three, and A is the set having the elements one, two, three, four. Then we can say C is a proper subset of A. Since C is a subset of A, but C does not equal. So it's not equal to A. So in this case, we write C is a proper subset of A. Now let's look at uh, what is meant by disjoint set. So two sets A and B are said to be disjoint if they have no elements in common. I think that's pretty straightforward, not difficult to understand. Let's take an example. Suppose A includes one and two, and B has four, five, and six, C has five, six, seven, eight. So in this example, A and B are said to be disjoint. And also A and C are said to be disjoint. But B and C are not disjoint because B and C have elements in common. For example, five and six. So we note that A and B are disjoint, then neither is a subset of the other. So this is the concept of disjoint sets. Now another concept uh, to introduce finite and infinite sets. A set S is said to be finite if S is empty or S contains exactly M elements where M is a positive integer. So we have a finite amount of elements in that kind of a set. Otherwise, S is said to be infinite. And next point is, if the set is infinite, set S is infinite, its number of elements is called as the cardinality. So this is a special term. So cardinality is represented as the notation given here. So let's take an example. So if A has the elements 12, 24, 10, and 53, then the number of elements in A is four. Therefore, A, we can call A is a finite set. Number two example, let E be the set of even positive integers. That is E is equal to two, four, six, and so on. But there, there is no finite number of elements in that set, which means it is infinite. So in this case, E is an infinite set. Lastly, we introduce the concept of Venn diagrams. So let's see what is meant by a Venn diagram and how it is represented. So you can see in the example, there are rectangular representation as well as uh, disks or circular representation. So the interior of the rectangle denotes the universal set. And the disks lying within the interior of the rectangle denote the other sets. So in the first diagram, you see that uh, within the rectangle, you have two uh, circles, so disks uh, represent A and B, sets A and B, and they are disjoint because they do not have any elements in common. And the diagram on the right uh, denotes, again, two sets A and B, but they are not disjoint. In fact, B in this case, which is denoted in green, is a proper subset of A. So this is uh, represented in a Venn diagram. With that, we reach the end of the lesson. So this lesson was the introduction to set theory. And in the next lesson, we will be covering set operations and identities. 
Thank you.